Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze from a while, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. And I'd like to give a big shout out to CJ Goodfellow from Sports TV. Bomb Squad, baby. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Hellblaze, at thehellblaze.com. 100% all natural products from lotions, soaps, foot soaks, bath bombs, and much, much more. Use the promo code Goodfellow One Boxing. Tell them your boy CJ Goodfellow since you get 18% off. We out. All right, man, we back. Goodfellow Sports TV. Uh, Dana, Dana White and Bob Arum exchanged some words. And also, Bob Arum has said that boxing will be back in June for ESPN Top Rank, like I reported like a month ago. And we're going to talk about some of the fights that you may or fighters you may catch, uh, you know, on those top ranked shows and where they, it could be taking place at. So hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. I'll link all the articles and sources in the description of the source link in this video. And don't forget, you can always catch me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Those links are in the description. If you have a business question, quiet response, or video request, DM me there. Uh, you just want to chop it up. But uh, yeah, man, Dana White uh, kind of clapped back at Bob Arum. Bob Arum. Basically said he was an idiot for trying to put fights on during a pandemic of the coronavirus, the Roro, as we call it on this channel. And long story short, Dana White said he going bankrupt, uh, Bob Arum, and that Bob Arum, you know, been in the game for a long time. And he basically, you know, shitting on Bob Arum in a short amount of time and saying that, you know, that he don't have the money to put the fights on during the coronavirus. And he do have the money. So the difference is... Uh, what Bob Arum main event make, you know what I'm saying? Let's say he put Shakira in there with Miguel Moraga, and what they are making that fight, Moraga will probably make quarter million. I don't know what Shakira making right now, but in that small fight, that main event would be the biggest part, one of the biggest purses in, in in Dana White's you know elite fights. So what Bob Arum is paying for mid level fighters and prospects and young champions like Moraga or like Shakira Moraga, that's like Dana White's main fight. That's his, that's like his, his Stipe in, in, um, in, in DC. He not paying them dudes no real money. So of course Dana White can, can afford to pay these dudes money because he not paying them much and he pocketing, he pocketing the rest. See, and also Dana White is dealing with a monopoly. Well, he dealing with, I'm going to say a monopoly, you can say he monopolized it, but they do have Bellatar and stuff of that nature, but he don't have that much competition. So they can't run and say, oh, we can go over to PBC or the zone to get more money. You know what I'm saying? He don't have nobody to keep up with. Him paying his fighters what they what he paying them right now, that's the best on the market. Bellatar ain't paying their fighters like uh like UFC paying their fighters, you know, not to my knowledge. So Dana White can flex all he wants to, but his fighters, you know, ain't making no real money. So of course he could put fights on in a pandemic. He he usually just pocket the gate probably anyway. You know what I'm saying? So of course he could put these the, the, these shows on with just TV money. You're not paying them nothing. UFC is cheaper than boxing. You got dudes making you know three and a half million dollars a piece on a regular TV boxing show, or three and a half for somebody making two. That's Dana White whole car right there. But Dana White is, is, is able to flex on Bob. He's able to put these shows on because his fighters are eating like Spam and, and Vienna sausages compared to, you know, uh, Bob Arum fighters eating T-bone steaks and motherfucking filet mignon young and caviar. They eating, they eating at the big boy table. So you tell the whole story. He underpays his, his fighters. And that's why his fighters can able to lose and lose again. That's why his fighters can able to, you know, have to fight the best. They can't run nowhere else. You're not gonna run back to to Bellator and make less on a on a shittier platform. And Top Rank got to deal with got to deal with PBC raising the, the bar up, the Zone raising the pay bar up. Boxers getting that real money compared to UFC fight. They still making hundred thousand in the main event. And that's why the, the 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 dictatorship that Dana White got and basically monopolizing mixed martial arts. He don't have no competition. This is why he can continue to give you the best fights. Because if some a champion don't want to fight another challenger, Dana White can strip his ass, you know what I'm saying, and put somebody else in there and keep him moving so they know Dana White is the say all. He the end all, be all. They know it's a dictatorship. They know who it is. He owns all the rights to their names. Why can Dana White get a UFC video game and boxing can't? Because Dana White owns all the rights. 
In boxing, they got to go to each individual fighter to get their rights to put on the video game. If each individual fighter want 10000 to be in the video game, then you ain't probably going to make that money back. Or if you, only, if you get a lesser amount of fighters, the video game not going to be good. UFC, I can talk to Dana White, and I can sign one contract. I can get him whatever he wants to build this UFC fight game. I ain't got to go through 100 different boxers, 20 different managers and promoters. That's why. If Dana White had boxing like UFC did with the pay scale and the dictatorship, you would see the best fight the best. The boxers will suffer, but the fans, you know, the fans would be good. But, of course, Bob Aram can't afford to, afford to put fights on. Nobody in boxing other than the zone, unless you go somewhere that's going to pay a good side fee, can afford to put top-level fights on. They wasn't putting top-level fights on before the coronavirus, the road roll started. You know what I'm saying? They weren't putting no top real elite fights on. Wilder and Fury was was one of them. And look at them. They got paid $30 million a piece guarantee. You let me know a UFC main event that even came close to that. None. But they ain't got the money. They, I mean, top rank ain't got, I mean, uh, UFC ain't got that type of uh, issues, man. You take what you can get. So, you know, you can talk all day out the ass you want to. Bob Aaron fighters eating too good. Your fighters ain't eating that well. And he probably got a non-disclosure agreement, you know, they got a sign where they can't talk against Dana White in the pay scale. I already know that's a deal. That's his name. And Dana White, the one that's making 30, 40, 50, 60 million dollars on their shows. Bob Arum used to do that shit too. Until Al Heyman came along. But they wasn't making no top fights before when the money was, you know, kind of there. It was marinating everything. And that's why Dana White gonna continue to prosper, man. He got the great game plan, but yeah, top rank uh, shows can be back on ESPN uh, in June. That's kind of been the word the last month, whatever it has been. They're going to come back in June, and they're talking about doing it at a hotel ballroom with no fans there. So you're probably going to see Shakira and probably maybe Miguel Moraga, Tifa Lopez. They want him to come back in June and take a tune up. And the problem with him is he can't continue to make this weight no more. So he might come back at a catch weight or something like that. I don't know. Maybe just give him a little small title defense, but. Um, they said uh, also Victor Postor or Jose Ramirez can take place at the ballroom and that's probably going to be the best fight you're going to see as far as you know behind you know without an audience right now so I'm looking forward to that fight they got canceled twice it's supposed to be in China that's when the coronavirus broke out over there and it was supposed to be uh, May 5th or something like that 6th or something whatever the hell it is it was supposed to be and they're supposed to fight in Fresno so they're going to end up fighting with no fans you know just the commission and stuff of that nature in a, in a ballroom in, in, uh, in Las Vegas. So uh, so you got T.O. Secure, Jose Postal, those are fights you probably can see in June. I think that's a solid boxing schedule. I think they should do huge numbers if they put them on regular ESPN. And ESPN shouldn't even go against the grain on it because they don't have nothing to show. You know, how many times they're going to talk about the last dance? How many times, you know, first take going to talk about the same shit? You know what I'm saying? So... There's really no program to be on there. So none of these fights should be on ESPN+. Plus. They should all be on ESPN. But the issue is going to be the language. So uh, like ESPN did with the last dance where you could watch it with the language, you know, with the language being strong, they had to put that disclaimer on there. Even if they start playing basketball at, in, in Vegas or they start playing again in Walt Disney World or land, whatever the hell they're talking about doing that at. The issue is that with no fans and no, no, no sound, you can hear the players cuss. So that's something they got to put a disclaimer on. That's something that they're going to have to figure out. But, I mean, I don't know exactly when Premier Boxing Champion is going to plan to come back. But, um, you know, it'll be interesting. It talks about fighting in Miami. Like, I think UFC fighting at some island in Miami or some shit. So, um, kind of like Bob did a deal in, in Vegas. Uh, we'll see what PBC do a deal at. Uh, maybe uh, Florida. Uh, we know it won't be New York. <laughs> so, we'll see, man. But I'm looking forward to some of those, some of those fights coming up. Uh, always love to see Secure fight. Uh, Ramirez always an entertaining fight. Him and Postal will probably be the fight of the month. Um, I think UFC coming back this weekend. Uh, it was another fight. Uh, Secure. Oh, T.O. probably come back versus a, a nice tune-up, you know. So that must mean he must be close to weight. He must be training well. So, you know, we'll see what else Bob Aram got cooked up. But him and Dana White, two different situations, man. If Dana White was in boxing, Dana White would be facing the same issues that, uh, that um that Bob is facing as far as pay scale and all that stuff. So it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think. I'll put some sources in the description so you can check out check it out for yourself. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out at any time if you have a business question, inquiry, sponsorship, video request. 
Um, or you just want to chop it up, want to make a donation, cash out, PayPal description. That's where the donate is. Share, share the video. Let me know what y'all guys think about the Dana White, Bob Ram back and forth over the years. <laughs> Dana White said he bankrupt, and that's probably why he's trying to sell top rank, which ain't nothing really moving right now after how the economy moving, but not like this. But let me know what you guys think about the possible show, Secure, T.O., and Jose and Victor Postal. Jose Ramirez with the Postal in June. So, I know if y'all excited for boxing coming back. Appreciate the love support one time for the one time we're going.